Thank you so much to everyone who's been following along with the AI Weekly Update series. This video is the first in a new series previewing the next weekly update. So this is the preview for the AI Weekly Update that will come out Monday, December 28th. So the reason I wanted to start this preview video series is to help you get a sense of how what it is about the titles, the abstracts, the overall how these new papers are fitting into the context of deep learning and artificial intelligence, and how exactly it is that I'm deciding on this content for the AI Weekly Update video series. So with that said, I also would really appreciate any suggestions, anything that you might have seen that happened this week that you think I need to cover in the video. And also I'd really appreciate any thoughts that you have as we do a quick tour of each of these things. And I just give a quick sense of just like um, what is motivating me to want to make the time commitment to dive deep into each of these pieces of news in the space of AI and deep learning. So thanks for watching and let's get into why these titles, abstracts, are appealing and interesting for the next AI Weekly Update video. The first thing I'm interested about is large-scale clinical interpretation of genetic variants using evolutionary data and deep learning. So I've been really interested in the space of deep learning for healthcare. We've seen so much about uh, protein representation learning from AlphaFold2. In last weekly update, we looked at Facebook's ESM 1 billion, where they're also training these large language models on amino acid sequences. Later in this video, we'll also look at another paper that's doing language modeling with amino acid sequences. So clearly there's something happening with deep learning and proteins, and then there's also a big wave on trying to get healthcare data together. So a really great course I recommend, it's free on YouTube, which is unbelievable. It's MIT Machine Learning for Healthcare, taught by uh, David Sontag and another professor, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. But this course is great. It talks about, say, the Mimic 3 data set and trying to assemble these healthcare data sets. So I'm really excited to see how they try to tie in this uh, you know, clinical data with the protein sequences, and you know, I'm expecting this to be a really exciting paper. Pre-training a language model without human language has a really funny sounding title. The idea here is that they're gonna train these language models on amino acid sequences or JavaScript code, and then fine tune them on the glue benchmarks that are things like semantic similarity or text classification. So overall, I'm just really excited to see if there's patterns and in information like amino acids and JavaScript, probably JavaScript code has much more similarity to the glue benchmarks, but still seeing how this works. And I just think it's an incredibly uh, outside of the box way of thinking about this. If you've been following the Henry AI Labs YouTube channel, you know I'm a big fan of pattern exploiting training. Pattern exploiting training is a strategy to use these language models and the way that they fill in these masked out prompts to do things like data augmentation, facilitate semi-supervised learning with knowledge distillation. And in this paper, it looks like they are gonna be seeding the models and then using the mass to generate long uh, text sequences. So in the past, the pattern exploiting training framework has been used to label data by, say, just filling out a single masked out token. In this case, it looks like the researchers are expanding this to generate longer sequences. So I think this pattern exploiting training idea is incredibly interesting to you know, get something out of these language models. They're training these large language models, but it seems like there's not enough research on, well, what can the language model do? When the attention layer first came out and transformer neural networks started gaining all this hype, it was really confusing and not many people had a great sense of how the attention layer works. But now thanks to Jay Alomar's The Illustrated Transformer and Yannick Kilcher's explanation of the attention is all you need paper, much more people have a sense of how transformers work, how attention layers work. So I'm really excited to dive into interfaces for explaining transformer language models. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting uh, discussion in this blog post about how to communicate the idea of attention, these heat maps, the softmax activation, and all these ideas for how we're uh, communicating this idea of attention in deep learning. Hugging Face has been putting together an improved version of their NLP datasets library. So I've really enjoyed using the Kaggle API to access datasets, and now the Hugging Face team is making a sprint to add datasets to their NLP library. So I'm really excited to see the latest update on how this is going. It's so exciting just having these libraries that make loading data into your machine learning pipelines as easy as, say, using uh, like Torch Vision, Torch Text, or uh, I think like Keras, TensorFlow, they have built-in datasets that are so easy that you just do uh, something like keras.mnist or keras.cfar10, and then you have that data and you can easily pipeline it into your models. The idea of the Hugging Face NLP datasets is to be able to access all of these incredibly interesting datasets with the same ease and not having to do too much uh, data 
engineering, wrangling, pre-processing in order to get this into these model workflows. There's been a lot of campaigning for offline reinforcement learning. This is where we're trying to learn uh, reinforcement learning agents from previously collected experience. This is the latest paper on doing this for vision-based robotics, where we have robotics that use vision in order to navigate the world, and thus these uh, researchers are able to collect massive data sets of the images and the previous interactions with the robots. So I'm really excited to read the latest and greatest of what's happening with uh, offline reinforced learning from images with these latent space, probably like uh, generative world models is what this kind of latent space models is referring to. Some kind of model that can do state action, next state prediction using this offline data is what I suspect just by reading the title. Evaluating agents without rewards reminds me of the research on quality, diversity, open-endedness, uh, things from like uh, Kenneth Stanley and Jeff Kloon and their lab at Uber was, were, were really pushing this um, search for novelty, not particularly some task evaluation metric. So I'm really excited to see exactly what's in this paper, uh, just this idea of evaluating agents without rewards, the idea of novelty search and quality diversity, and uh, the book Greatness Cannot Be Planned, is that uh, just direct optimization for some objective is very misleading compared to just searching for intrinsic novelty, or I'm excited to see the ideas in this paper. In order to try to better curate newsletters of my own, I, I like to read other people's newsletters, obviously, and uh, Sebastian Ruder is one of the best uh, newsletter writers. He has this natural language processing newsletter that comes out about every month, and so I'm really excited to dive into this and see what, uh, you know, learn a lot from the structure of this, and. You know, I've been reading these maybe for about two years now, so I really like these. I also expect uh, the papers with code to have another newsletter. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I'll probably add that also. It's about the time of the year where people start posting AI in 2020 recap videos. So here's one that was a uh, GitHub repository. I really like the structure of this. Each one is a quick description of the paper, and then the author of the repository has made a short video explanation, a short summary, and then links to the paper and code if available. So this is a really great AI in 2020. I love doing this recap. It's fun to kind of, you know, zoom out a bit and just take in the year and have a different perspective on all these different things like AlphaFold 2, GPT-3. Uh, just so much stuff happens every year and it's really fun to do these yearly recap videos. So I'll be making one of my own and I really appreciate having these out there to try to get a sense of uh, what, you know, everyone else thinks are the most interesting things that have happened in 2020 in deep learning and AI. So on that same kind of idea, we'll also look at this Microsoft Research Newsletter, 2020 a year in review. You know, things like say Microsoft's Deep Speed Library where they built out this infrastructure for distributed training that enables training models even larger than GPT-3. Then we'll look at this article in the Gradient, when Bert plays the lottery, all tickets are winning. So the lottery ticket hypothesis is an incredibly exciting idea that we may be able to train the sparse networks after they've been pruned from scratch. And thus we save a ton of computational cost in the first training of the model. So I'm really excited to read anything about what's new with the lottery ticket hypothesis. And I'm excited for the blog format. I assume that, uh, you know, generally reading blog posts, I, I find them to be a little more readable and written uh, less technically than say a research paper. So I'm excited to see if this makes understanding what is the new experiments with the BERT architecture and then the lottery ticket hypothesis to make it maybe more accessible and easier to digest. This looks like it's going to be huge news. Facebook AI is publishing Data Efficient Image Transformers, a promising new technique for image classification. And you see this chart where they're claiming to have better performance than the Efficient Net. Efficient Net was the product of uh, a lot of neural architecture search experiments to try to find the best combination of the convolutional neural network design. And it looks like we're seeing the case where visual transformers are starting to really seriously pass. See, these blue dots are things like the Google Vision Transformer that, you know, they're good 78%, 76, say 0.5%, but they're not better than the efficient net convolutional design. And it looks like this new model is better. So that's a huge development that visual transformers are starting to take over the computer vision tasks as well. So this paper, you know, it might end up being like the first or second thing that is covered in the AI Weekly Update, seeing what's new in this uh, new idea on data efficient image transformers.
So this is kind of just a quick news update. I don't think there's a whole blog post explaining this. You can just uh, register to join the waitlist for beta access, but it's always fun to see, to keep a tab on what is Hugging Face up to. So this is their auto NLP tool, and they're working on, uh, say, the hyperparameter optimization, all these things. When you're using the Hugging Face library, you have three components right off the back. You have the choice of tokenizer, you have the different base models, like, say, BERT, GPT, BART, all these different base models, and then you have the classification head. So those are three large components that you could each change out and swipe for tryout, say, byte pair tokenizer, the subwar tokenizer, and then you could test out GBT, BERT, BART, and then different configurations for the classification head, maybe with respect to the linear projection dimension, all these kinds of things. So there's definitely a lot of hyperparameters to tune with these NLP pipelines, and I'm really excited to see how this develops. Finally, we'll look at this uh, blog post on DeepMind's annual report, why it's hard to run a commercial AI lab. So maybe more stepping out into the meta and you know running this deep learning research and the business of deep learning research. I think this is a really interesting article that try to take apart a little bit of uh, what it costs to run a monster research lab like DeepMind. So this is the content that's gonna be covered in the AI Weekly Update video, Monday, December 28th, a deeper dive into all these topics. So I hope this video was useful and uh, maybe helped you get a quick sense of just before I've read any of this, what I think the interesting thing is and how I think it relates to the other research and deep learning and the storyline of how this is all developing. So see you on Monday and please leave any suggestions to improve this video.